Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're gonna to go inside a compounding pharmacy and talk to their pharmacist there about compounded terzepatide and learn a little bit about how that process happens and why I think compounded terzepatide is safe when you find a reputable pharmacy like Victory Pharmacy in Austin, Texas. I'm here at Victory Pharmacy in Austin, Texas with Dr. Christy Knob. She is a doctor of pharmacy and she's gonna just walk us through compounding terzepatide. So welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit, Christy, about the process of compounding terzepatide from start to finish. Sure, so it does start out as a powder. Um, we would consider this a non-sterile powder. So we receive it in bulk in just a white powdery substance. It, it is processed through our lab. It is uh, weighed out in the appropriate volume for the batch we're going to be making. Um, it is turned into a solution, so we add additional ingredients, um, sterile water in this case, uh, turn it into a solution. It is sterilized using filtration method, um, so we do end up with a larger batch of the sterile terzepatide product. And then at that point, we will draw it out in the individual syringes uh, based on the patient's volume that they will be injecting in the the dose that they're appropriately using. And can someone just walk into the pharmacy and ask for terzepatide, or do they need to go through someone else to get it? Yes, so they will have to see their provider and get a prescription for them. Um, it is not something you could just walk in and, and ask for it over the counter. It, it is uh, compounded that would need a prescription. Tell me a little bit about some of the misconceptions people have about compounded terzepatide in this case, and just help us help alleviate some of the concerns people may have. I know out there a lot of people are a little nervous using a compounded medication saying it's not FDA approved or this hasn't been studied or uh, there's not tests to show this is safe. There is a lot of misinformation around that. So we do a lot of testing to make sure uh, the products we're using and the compound that we dispense is safe um, and, and okay for our patients to use. So that is our biggest concern as we wanna make sure everyone is safe who uses this product. We will send off our products for testing. We use an outside lab. Um, this verifies the potency of the medication. Um, if we do sterility testing, which means we wanna make sure the product is sterile for a certain amount of time, um, we will often do this on, on products that we're using for multiple months over time. Additionally, we do in-house testing for endotoxin. So this is we're testing to make sure there's no bacteria in the final substance that we're, we're dispensing. So in this case, the terzepatide, we want to make sure there's no bacteria, it's not going to make anyone sick, and that um, it's a good, healthy, clean product that we can dispense to the patients. And why a lot of the pharmaceutical companies have been complaining about patent infringement, why you're able to do compounding now with this medication. Sure. So as many people probably know, they've heard of the brand name medications out there. Those are the ones that are manufactured from, from different uh, companies, different brand name companies out there. And they go through the whole process of getting their medications FDA approved. Um, a lot of money, a lot of time is involved in that. Currently, they are not able to supply enough to meet the demand of our country. Um, as we all know, this has been very popular and widely prescribed, and currently it's what we would consider a back-order medication or a short-supply medication. The FDA does keep a list of these products um, readily available on the, on the FDA website as well, and if that medication is listed as short-supply, Pharmacies, compounding pharmacies are legally able to compound that. If for some reason the medication is no longer considered short supply, pharmacies are still able legally to compound it. We just have to change it. We can't, we can't make an exact copy of something that's already made and FDA approved from a branded uh, company. So. And are currently, because it's in short supply, are y'all making an exact copy? It still wouldn't be considered an exact copy because our concentration is different. So we are 25 milligrams per ml, um, whereas the branded medications are, you'll see uh, 2.5 milligrams per 0 0.5 ml. So it's not the exact same. Another, I think, misconception people have is that you're using a different initial compound, but the initial compound that you're using is the same initial compound that's being put in brand name medication. It's not exactly the same because 
you're taking that powder and adding a liquid to it and you're packaging it very differently. So it's not exactly the same, but the the key ingredient is the same. Um, so yes, it starts out with that that same compound, that terzepatide powder, and then we we turn it into the solution in-house and make it here in our lab. You know, Eli Lilly is one of the big companies and Nova Nordisk is one of the big companies. Are y'all getting the same active pharmaceutical ingredient that, that they're, are y'all using the same manufacturer or are y'all choosing a different one and how do you choose the manufacturer? Sure, um, so it would not be the exact same manufacturer. Those companies are making their own pharmaceutical ingredients so we're not getting that there specifically, but it is the same chemical compound. Um, it's, it's the exact same molecular makeup. Um, it's just made from a different facility. We as compounders and as compounding pharmacies have to be very diligent with who we purchase our ingredients from. We, we won't just buy it from anybody. Like that, that's not, you can't just walk in my door and sell me a product that I'm going to buy. We, we go through a very heavy vetting process, I would call it. Um, we want to see where the chemical is coming from. We want to essentially the pedigree of, of where from start to finish what happens with the chemical, how we receive it. We test it to make sure it's valid and it says what the paperwork says it is. Um, we test it for potency. We test it to make sure there's no endotoxin in it like we discussed. Most of the suppliers also do this on their own. Um, so that's something that we value. We want to make sure that they do their chemical testing. We do it as well just to verify that. Why are compounded medications not FDA approved? So no compounded medications are FDA approved, regardless of, of if it's terzepatide or if it's uh, a thyroid medication, progesterone, anything like that. It is, it is not FDA approved, but that doesn't mean they're not safe or that um, patients shouldn't be using them. I think consumers have to be diligent about picking a pharmacy that does their due diligence and is producing products that are safe. I wouldn't recommend buying things off the internet. You don't know where that's coming from. Um, or other countries as well don't follow the same specifications or restrictions that we here have to follow. So, Do you ever foresee, I think it's going to be years from now, but do you ever foresee that terzepatide and even semaglutide are going to be removed from the difficult to obtain list? And at that point, would y'all need to add an additional compound to it? Talk to me about future thoughts about that. Sure. I think probably some point down the line, it will fall off that list. The, the manufacturers will be able to finally catch up mm -hmm. with the demand that's going on. I agree, it'll probably be quite some time. Yeah, years. Um, and at that point, we will have to decide how we want to change. I know a lot of other pharmacies are adding B12 or other components to their initial terzepatide, semaglutide, um, just to already have that change to where it's different from the manufacturer. So then um, even if the item is no longer on the back order, short order list, and they're able to continue with their compound without changing it. We are purists, so to speak. We mm -hmm. like just the, the chemical that was meant and initially supposed to be in it. So that's why we haven't added any additional agents to ours. When, when down the line, if it does come off, we'll have to decide at that yeah. point how we change if, if we are going to. Yeah. I'm a purist as well. <laughs> and so that's why one of the reasons why I fell in love with your pharmacy. I think what's nice though is because I think it's going to be so far down the road, we'll have experience with other compounding pharmacies adding something like B12 and seeing if there's any deleterious effects. I, I can't imagine there would be, but at the end of the day, you know, we just don't, we just don't know. Well, we want it to be as similar as the product that we know has been te tested and vetted and has been approved by the FDA. Right. Well, I'd love to take a tour of the pharmacy, so oh. let's let's go on a tour. Oh, perfect. Yes, so we do traditional medications, like we mentioned, blood pressure, diabetes, antibiotics, as well as compounded non-sterile. So if you're taking progesterone, if you were um, testosterone, those sorts of things we make as well. It has been a pleasure to meet yeah. you. Thank you so much yes, for the tour and just teaching me a little bit about it. Thank you for joining me as we got a behind the scenes look on compounded terzepatide at Victory Pharmacy in Austin, Texas. I'll put more information about Victory Pharmacy in the description below. 
If you liked today's episode, please consider giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel where I plan to continue to give updated medical information with a specific interest in obesity. And please leave comments. I do like reading those if you have any other suggestions for future episodes. Thanks again.